Hello, you absolute legends. In the 20 years that I've been speedrunning Goldeneye, I've seen a lot of crazy players come and go. But today, we will look at the top three greatest of all time. These speedrunners were champions, but more than that, they were innovators, each impacting and changing the way the game is played forever. We will examine their careers and look at their most insane achievements. We will tell the stories of how they made their entrance, and I have to say all three of these players had really interesting beginnings. So join me now as we honour these three men, and if you enjoy learning about speedrunning history, be sure to subscribe for future videos. There's a question that's sometimes thrown around. Could there be someone out there that we don't know about that has legitimately beaten some of the known world records? Is it possible that the times that we take for granted as the best in the world are actually second best to an unknown player? With the rise in popularity of speedrunning, this question is asked less frequently, as the plausibility of this scenario seems too low to really consider. But believe it or not, there was a time in history where this actually happened. Between the years of 1999 and 2000, there was a secret player who had beaten not just one or two, but many of the known world records. That player was Wouter Janssen. Don't ask me why he didn't contact the GoldenEye community until late 2000, when he had been achieving world records since early 1999, but I can tell you that when he did make contact, it was shocking. Before the GoldenEye Elite was born, conversations about world record times and GoldenEye speedrunning in general were scattered over numerous forums. One such forum was the GoldenEye message boards hosted on Game FAQs. At the time, Game FAQs was absolutely huge, and the Nintendo 64 boards were bustling with activity. In a topic titled GoldenEye World Records, Walter made his very first public post on the 26th of September 2000. In his post, Walter casually mentions that he has 35 world records, and 18 of them are untied. After several people pushed Walter to release his times, he listed all 60 of his personal bests, along with a couple of small strategy optimizations. A lot of his times seemed insane, and I hilariously responded, stating that half of them are simply physically impossible. It's pretty funny looking back on these posts, but it just didn't make sense that this random person would suddenly appear with all of these crazy times. I wasn't the only one to doubt Wouter's times though. In fact, for months, there was a lot of pushback from both the champion at the time, Sterling Neblet, and the updater of the GoldenEye ranks, Wes McKinney. Honestly, looking back, a lot of people were extremely hostile towards Wouter. The entire situation was just so bizarre that a lot of people couldn't comprehend that Wouter actually achieved all of these times outside of the community. It didn't help that Wouter was slow to make proof available due to his slow internet connection, and as English was Wouter's second language, his phrasing was slightly off, which was often misconstrued as being intentionally cryptic. As history has shown though, Wouter was legit. After months of slowly providing proof, he was added to the ranks on the 29th of December 2000. He debuted in second place, just three points behind the current champion, Sterling Neblet. Sterling wouldn't hold the lead for long though. On the 26th of February 2001, Wouter became the GoldenEye champion. Wouter was a strategic mastermind, and brought with him a ton of new strategies and optimizations. In fact, in terms of new world records set, Wouter has by far the most. He was always pushing limits, and never settled for a time that he thought he could improve, even if it was already an uncontested record. He was one of the first true grinders of the game. He wasn't afraid to spend hundreds of hours playing for a time that seemed almost impossible. An early example of this is Wouter's untied world record on Bunker 1 Agent of 17 seconds, achieved on the 18th of August 2003. He played the level for months, trying to get the perfect run, which was highly dependent on guard RNG. It was an extremely optimized run, and when achieved, was considered to be one of the greatest world records ever. 
it stood unmatched for almost three years and went on to become the second longest standing world record of all time at just over 15 years. He was also meticulous with his proof, and back in the early years, he pioneered the idea of recording every session and every personal best. Even though at the time proof standards were extremely low, he kept his own standards high, and his videos helped push the community forwards. Walter was dominant from the beginning of 2001 until the end of 2003, when he was overtaken by another true legend that we will cover later in this video. Once dethroned, his activity halted dramatically, and he slowly but surely fell in overall rank. But interestingly, some of his best and most famous records came at the tail end of his career in 2005, including his world record of Frigate Agent 23. This was another time that Wouter spent months to achieve, and is probably my personal favourite of Wouter's records. Nine years later in 2014, it still had relatively few ties, and only the very best of the best were able to match it. I feel like it bridged the gap between the ancient champion and the newer generation of players. Frigate 23 also went on to become one of the longest standing records ever. Since 2006, Walter hasn't played much, and as of the making of this video, only has a single world record to his name. It is bittersweet that of the 172 new world records that Wouter set, none remain as the world record. Wouter is no longer highly ranked, but his legacy will never be forgotten, especially for us older players. I still remember that all the way back in 2001, Wouter sent me a videotape full of some of his best runs. I was a proof moderator at the time, and despite me being on the other side of the planet, Wouter was more than happy to send me a tape. I can still recall putting it into my VCR in my family's living room and having my 15-year-old mind completely blown. Wouter was, and always will be, an absolute legend. In late 2002, while Wouter was dominating Goldeneye, another player stumbled upon the ranks. Just like Wouter, he too played the game in secret, slowly grinding away at the game without ever making contact with the Goldeneye speedrunning community. It took him three years before any message was sent to the ranking's administrators requesting to be added. Who could blame him though? When he started speedrunning Goldeneye in 2002, he was only seven years old. By the time he requested to be added to the ranks, he was barely 10. That player is Rayan Isran. In fact, he was still so young that it wasn't even him that sent the email to the rankings admin asking to join. It was his older brother acting on his behalf. By August of 2005, Rayan still had no intention of joining the ranks. But his older brother Daniel noticed how much time Rayan was putting into the game and decided it was finally time for him to join. Rayan joined the ranks in September of 2005. He had a decent times page, nothing insane like Wouter's entry, but definitely good enough to raise suspicions among other players. Rayan's main interest originally lay in Perfect Dark, and his times in that game were definitely stronger than Goldeneye. So when he made his first post on the Perfect Dark message boards, people were extremely skeptical. Looking at his post, it's not hard to see why people were in disbelief. Rayan stated, I believe I am the only 10 years old in this elite. Started playing at the age of seven. Check out some of my sick times. And the times that he claimed were actually really, really good. Especially given that Rayan only had access to the PAL version of the game, which is heavily disadvantaged. The entire situation was completely bizarre. Never before, nor since, has a player joined that was so young, let alone one that was actually decent at the games. People couldn't believe it. There was a lot of back and forth in that topic, with many players flat out refusing to believe Rayan was a legitimate player but this post encapsulates the general feeling when he joined. This guy is a complete fake. I guarantee he is someone else trying to put some joke to the elite. 
I consider myself a lifetime talented gamer. I've played my whole life, and I've played a ton of video games. I know what I'm doing. I've played GoldenEye, for example, since I was 7 years old. But in no way at 10 years old could I accomplish some of the stuff that was on this site. There's no way you could really comprehend that, or even care that much. The irony about this post isn't the fact that Rayan was indeed a real 10 year old getting insane times. It's the fact that what was said is true. He couldn't accomplish some of the stuff Rayan did at 10 years old, and I'd wager that no one could. Rayan is the single most gifted and naturally talented speedrunner I have ever seen. Period. I truly believe that only he could do what he did at such a young age. He ended up proving the naysayers wrong though by uploading a video of him playing Perfect Dark, which has gone on to become infamous among Goldeneye and Perfect Dark speedrunners. Here is that video. Yeah, take that, ma. That's Perfect. Rayan was now completely accepted into the community. When he joined, he was ranked just outside the top 50. He played consistently through 2006, and while he was achieving some pretty decent times, he didn't truly start to excel until February 2007. Rayan still only had access to a PAL console, so he was losing sometimes on most levels. But there is one level that is actually PAL advantaged, and that level is Train. In the beginning of February 2007, the records on Train were at 105 on Agent, 129 on Secret Agent, and 156 on Double O Agent. Over a two week period, Rayan went on an absolute tear. He lowered each record by 4 seconds, taking them down to 101, 125, and 152. The remarkable thing about this feat is that there were no new strategies on train. No newly discovered time save that allowed him to lower the records. Rayan beat the records simply because he was a better player, and train in particular is a level that rewards skill. Despite only being 11 years old, Rayan showed that he was capable of destroying world records, but he was still kept back by only being able to play the PAL version. He still kept playing throughout 2007, but it wasn't until March of 2008 when he finally received an NTSC copy of the game. Now he seemed unstoppable, achieving new personal bests almost daily. Only three months later in June of 2008, Ace became GoldenEye Champion for the first time. His rise to the top, culminating with his destruction of Jungle and one of the greatest runs in GoldenEye history, Jungle Secret Agent 53. The run was an absolute masterpiece, both in execution and RNG. It would remain unmatched for over six years, finally being tied in 2014. When it was eventually tied, it was the longest standing untied world record in GoldenEye history, and still today ranks as the second longest of all time. He was finally champion, but in the very same month that he took the throne, Rayan completely disappeared. Without any new records to sustain his lead, it only took four months for Rayan to lose his championship status. Eventually though, he would return almost two years later. He played for a few months in 2010, very briefly taking back the number one position. Then, he disappeared again, for another two years. Rayan didn't return to Goldeneye until November of 2012. This time, however, he was serious. In late 2012 and in early 2013, Rayan went on a complete rampage of the game, getting many insane untied records. Some of these records included Jungle Agent 50, Aztec Agent 125, 
Egypt Secret and Double O Agent 45, and a complete untied sweep on facility, with times of 43, 52, 52. In January of 2013, Rayan reclaimed the GoldenEye Championship, holding the longest reign in history. Rayan isn't always active, but whenever he does take the game seriously, he's at the top. He holds the record for the most number of days spent as champion, at over 2,000 days. As far as technique goes, he is unsurpassed, widely considered to be the most skilled player ever. He has amassed the third highest total of overall world records at 169. If skill were the only metric to assess players, Rayan would undoubtedly be the greatest of all time. But there is one area that he has never really fully actualized as much as some other players, and that is innovation. He is well known for lowering records through perfect play, but rarely for coming up with new groundbreaking ideas. While I've put Rayan as number two on this list, there is definitely an argument for him being the greatest GoldenEye player of all time. But personally, I've decided to reserve that title for a player that not only exceeded his contemporaries in skill, but also created game-changing strategies that would impact the game for years to come. On June 27th of 2002, a topic was created that would completely revolutionize the way Aztec, the second last level of the game, was played. That topic was simply titled, Brian Bossard. In this topic, the admin posted an email they had received from Brian asking to join the ranks. The email was mostly standard. It outlined Brian's times, which were definitely impressive, but nothing crazy. What was truly astonishing about the email, though, was a new strategy that Brian had come up with to get the guards to open the glass door on Aztec. He mentioned he wasn't sure if it was faster than the current strategy. But let me tell you, it's probably the largest and most impactful sequence break ever found in GoldenEye. Brian is a strategic genius, and is always looking for ways to optimize how levels are played. It didn't take long for Brian to establish himself as the top player either. Only three months after joining, Brian achieves Damn Agent 53, one of his most famous records. For the time, it was an absolutely insane record that would remain untied for over two years. Damn Agent 53 would go on to become the longest lasting GoldenEye record of all time. Brian was absolutely obsessed with GoldenEye and for the rest of 2002 and 2003, he played religiously. In December of 2003, he passed Wouter Janssen to become the new GoldenEye champion. Brian's reign at the top would last over three years, and during this time, he was absolutely dominant. Brian was an optimizer, in the same vein as Wouter and Rayan. He strove for perfection, and was willing to go for times that seemed almost impossible. In January of 2003, he completed Archive's Agent in 16 seconds, a record that stood for almost 15 years. In March of 2004, he achieved another infamous world record, Runway Agent 22. This record still stands today, and will likely become the new, longest standing record in history. It was an incredible time for 2004, and would stay untied for over two years. The list of amazing boss heart times is too long to do justice here. In terms of total world records set, he is listed as the second most prolific of all time. But his influence on the community wasn't just through setting new world records. It was in the way he pushed the game forwards in regards to playstyle. Whenever a new strategy or optimization was found, Brian was always the first to jump in and make use of it in runs. When Lookdown was discovered in late 2002, while everyone else was complaining about how it ruins the game, Brian was using the strategy to set better records. Brian implemented and attempted anything. Between the years of 2003 and 2005, 
I credit Brian with raising the overall awareness of technique and raising the standard of world records dramatically. One of Brian's more famous feats was the complete destruction of the control level between the years of 2003 and 2007. Single-handedly, lowering the records on Secret Agent and 00 Agent by over 10 seconds. This is one of the things that made Brian so great. He didn't need competition or pressure from others to lower his own records. In June of 2006, Brian was the first person to complete a tankless run of Runway 00 Agent, lowering the record to 37 seconds. This was a theoretical strategy that most people thought was just too insane to actually accomplish. But again, Brian was always willing to push boundaries and find out what was possible. Bossart briefly lost the championship in January of 2007 due to less overall activity in 2006. But once he was overthrown, he made a massive comeback, reclaiming the top spot in April of 2007. He would be champion for another year, being overtaken in early 2008. This was the last time Brian would be champion, after holding the title for a total of 1,416 days. But just because he wasn't champion, that didn't mean that he stopped playing altogether, and he continued to set some amazing records later in his career. In March of 2008, Brian set an absolutely iconic record of 218 on Statue 00 Agent, a time that stood untied for over five years and still remains the record today. In 2012, he achieved Runway Secret Agent 22, a fitting companion to the 22 on Agent he set eight years earlier. In 2016, Brian used an absolutely ridiculous strategy on Surface 2 00 Agent, farming two grenades at the very start, to set a new untied of 124. This strategy is so outlandish that never before nor since has a single person used this strategy to set a personal best. It mirrors the runway 00 Agent untied he set 10 years earlier a completely insane strategy that was known to be theoretically possible, but too stupid to actually be feasible in a run. As I keep saying though, Brian is willing to try anything. Beyond actually playing the game, he is often seen discussing new possible strategies or techniques, and continues to foster a true passion for the game. Whenever something new is found, Brian is always first to jump in and investigate. I can't express enough how much I respect and appreciate Brian's continuous love and excitement for GoldenEye speedrunning. Brian Bossart has been an incredible asset to the GoldenEye community for many years. He has been a dominant champion, a king of technique, a genius of strategy, a fearless explorer, and is in my opinion, the greatest GoldenEye player of all time. If you've made it this far in the video, you truly are an absolute legend. If you enjoyed these stories, please subscribe for more. Click on the video on screen now to move on to my next video.